Good Mental Health. I'm your host, Matt Kelly. I'm pleased to be joined once again by my co-host, our behavior expert and solutions-focused life coach out of Woodstock, Vermont, Dr. Neil Marinello. Neil, as always, it's a pleasure having you on the show. My pleasure too, Matt. Uh, I love our topic for today because it feels like it's a natural progression from our other two shows. We started this series with the topic, um, I am the most important person in the world to me, followed by there is no part of you that is not a part of me. And today's topic is just a natural tie-in, tie I feel. And that is each of us lives in our own reality. Neil, why don't you talk about what the uh, thoughts are behind that statement? Uh, sure, sure. Well, to, to begin with, uh, uh, let's imagine what it's like to be a baby and what it's like to grow up. And uh, uh, you have uh, what uh, uh, I think Locke was the person who called it a tabula rasa, uh, which is Latin for a, a blank slate. But the truth is that we have certain uh, hereditary characteristics, but the reality is that, uh, that uh, as babies, we really have very unformed brains and those brains get, uh, get fed certain amounts of data. That data base is based on the experiences that we have and the way that we interpret those experiences. Uh, I talked, I think before about the, the fact that every baby has two mothers. Uh, the one that uh, that feeds them when they're uh, uh, when they're hungry, and the one that changes the diaper when they're hungry. Uh, the reality is that the experience of the child uh, is very simple, uh, but we we all grow up, and we all grow up experiencing uh, 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 and interpreting things that happen to us uh, as our brains develop, and our brains are very undeveloped at at first. Um, the other problem is that what we're told by the giants who control our lives, our parents or the other nurturing people in our lives, uh, that gets accepted uh, even if those giants are wrong in what they're saying to us. Uh, and uh, the truth is that, uh, uh, that, and we may discuss this at some future time, uh, another uh, uh, basic precept that I have is that there are no grown-ups. Uh, at any rate, the, the supposed grown-ups who are bringing us up are telling us all kinds of things uh, that we uh, accept the same way a computer accepts what you program it with. Uh, and uh, the problem is that if you tell a computer that two and two is three, it not only believes that, it also believes that four and four is six, and it develops from that to uh, 400 and 400 and 600 and whatever other levels uh, it leads us to, which of course brings us to a reality which is not reality, oh. is not what is uh, things as they are. The, the other thing to be aware of is that uh, there's an argument that can be made that belief is the most strong force in the universe. Wow. Uh, and so I, I gave a sermon at our church one time uh, uh, titled Beliefs Are Us. And, uh, and I talked about the variety of, uh, of beliefs that each of us accept as truth, as fact. Uh, uh, there are many uh, people nowadays, right in the present, who are dealing with the fact that, uh, that uh, that they're ready to die for beliefs which are not provable as fact, mm. which are even questionable. And so you have the concept uh, that goes with uh, the uh, mental health community uh, of a delusion. Uh. It is basically a fixed false belief. And, uh, uh, but if it's fixed, it's very hard to mess with uh, by virtue of its being fixed. So you have this difficulty that if you actually believe something to be true, uh, it controls your behavior and it controls what you, uh, uh, what you see as reality. And, you know, as I uh, follow this through and, you know, try to uh, relate in, in my own uh, words how this uh, is important, you know, I'm an amalgam of all my experiences from the time I came to the womb to today. Um, and those experiences color my outlook. Um, and to use it maybe even as just a, a more uh, simple explanation, 
someone who's colorblind or someone who's blind has mm -hmm. a very different reality than someone who has sight or the full color spectrum of their sight. Um, someone who is deaf, uh, who hears no sound, has a, a very different reality than someone who does uh, hear sound. Um, so, uh, you know, when we think about that, then, then the, in essence, there are 7 billion different realities uh, on this planet that, uh, that we inhabit. Uh, yes, yes. In fact, uh, perception is often perceived as reality. Mm -hmm. And what we perceive may or may not be uh, what is. Uh, for example, without even going to the deaf blind examples that you gave, we can say uh, uh, what you see as blue and what I see as blue may be two different things. We both call it blue. <laughs> right. There's no way for you to know that I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing. Yeah. So the, the fact is that perception uh, determines what we see as reality. And, 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 that's and this sort of goes back to something that you were talking about in our previous conversation, which, you know, it's perception, but it's also, what did you say? I think interpretation, how you significate what you see. For example, um, you know, someone may be out there who sees racism at every turn and oppression, um, whereas I myself, I look and I see abundance uh, mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, but we may be looking at the same uh, city, the same society, and yet two very different uh, distinct perceptions and two very uh, different realities as a result. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the two words that apply here are significate which, uh, as I said, is a kind of a made up word, and uh, projection. Mm. Uh, so when you see something, uh, uh, you put onto that something that's coming from inside you, as well as whatever it is that you're observing. And uh, uh, observations are very clearly uh, different when you have two people seeing the same thing and describing the same thing. Uh, it doesn't look like the same thing. And we talked about that before, the Basque concept. Uh, but the, the reality is that, uh, uh, that even in science, uh, you have the, the fact that uh, placebos uh, are, are major determinants of what a person experiences. So if you believe something is going to work, it's much more likely to work than if you don't believe that it's going to work. Mm. If there's a flip side to the placebo, which we call the nocebo. And the nocebos, if you expect something bad to happen, something bad is more likely to happen. Mm. Expectation can create reality. Uh, you referred before to the time when you were uh, suicidal as uh, a moment in time when you felt that you were uh, inside the tunnel of darkness, I think was the term. That yeah, you tunnel of darkness. Yep. And that particular uh, uh, way of looking at it uh, led you to a suicide attempt that was mm. very serious. Uh, if you looked at it from the perspective of you were not inside the tunnel, but the tunnel was inside you, Oof. that is just one thing that, uh, and one way of perceiving things. And that in fact, there's all kinds of other ways of perceiving things. Uh, it probably would have been easier for you to uh, keep from trying to off yourself. Mm. You know, as we, again, we go back to perception and we go back to uh, reality. We all live in our own reality. Um, mm -hmm. it, it sort of begs the question, the nature of reality. And you might then just say the nature of reality is really perception and, mm -hmm. and, there and, actually, and signification again. Yeah. There actually are, uh, uh, a variety of philosophers and psychologists that can buy into that concept. And there's some science that backs it up. You know, when you look at, uh, at the Heisenberg concept, when you look at the fact that anytime you, you look at something, you change it. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, there are constructivists in the psychological community who believe that, uh, uh, that, uh, that this wall behind me is not really a wall. Mm, right. You know, it's something that I'm projecting onto it. And we, well, uh, and, and in a sense, you know, as we get down to the, you know, uh, what do we call it? The quantumness of reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that chair that you're sitting in actually isn't a chair, but molecules 
uh, that are spinning around creating a vibration and that's the form that it takes. And there's actually more air than matter in that, in that form. There's more nothing than there is anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I'm not expecting that I'm going to fall through it, uh, but scientifically it's possible. Uh, the, uh, even so, I don't plan to walk through the wall behind me. <laughs> and uh, my expectation is that, uh, uh, that until I get to the quantum level of things, uh, my perceptions are real, but mm. then you've got things like uh, like Newton's law of gravity, which is, mm. uh, stands up pretty well until you start messing around with uh, with Einstein. And, well, uh, yeah. and so if we go back again to the the theme of today's show, again, we all live in our own reality, and and it's all subjective, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it 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 makes it, I would think quite difficult to try to interact with others who are also in their own reality. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where, to me, uh, I get excited mm -hmm. because uh, everybody has a different reality. And if I can get inside their heads and see the world as they see, the, see it, then I have a chance to actually mess with their delusions. I have a chance to actually uh, change their perceptions in, by uh, by showing them that there's a different way of thinking than that the way they have been thinking. And it's very hard for people to change the way they're thinking, but everybody wants to do their best. And if they see that what they're doing is not their best, uh, that there's another way of looking at things that'll enable them to, to grow rather than shrivel, uh, most people will consider that possibility. And that's the key from my point of view to, uh, uh, changing people for the better. Mm. We're speaking with Dr. Neil Marinello here on Good Mental Health. Our topic today is each of us lives in our own reality. This is a follow-up to our uh, first two podcasts. We began our series with the uh, statement that I am the most important person in the world to me, followed by there is no part of you that is not a part of me. And again, our topic today is each of us lives in our own reality. And if again, I'm projecting forward what I see and what I interpret uh, from of you uh, as this image in front of me, again, uh, it bears no basis in actual fact, I guess. Uh, and yeah. so in a sense, if I'm to actually bring that into me, you know, I think I'm an amalgam of my experiences, but that's also not entirely full because I'm also an amalgam of people's reaction to me and the reality that that reaction creates out in the world. That's correct. Uh, let me see if we can make it a little more practical. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, back in the old days when I could afford a secretary, um, I had a, uh, uh, a new client coming in and I was uh, sitting in my office, finishing off with, an, uh, with the previous client. And there was somebody sitting in the uh, outer office uh, with my secretary and with the, uh, uh, as the new client came in. And the new client uh, uh, looked at, the, uh, at my secretary and said, uh, it's one o'clock, my appointment with the doctor is at one o'clock, uh, wh where is he? And she said, well, he's, uh, he's right now uh, meeting with someone. He'll be with you in a minute. And she turned to uh, the person who was sitting and waiting for the uh, client I was with and said, uh, uh, that's the only chair I can sit in. You're going to have to move. I have a bad back. And uh, the person got up and moved to another chair. And uh, uh, even though I was in a soundproofed room, I could feel the tension in my office. <laughs> And I uh, finished off with the client I was with and I uh, uh, ushered that person out. And uh, the new client uh, came to the door and I introduced myself and uh, uh, she uh, walked in and, uh, and uh, as soon as I closed the door, she said, um, uh, she turned into a, 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 almost a little girl. Uh, she looked like a five-year-old and she looked at me and she said, do you think I was assertive enough? And in my mind, I was saying, 
you're already so assertive that you're more aggressive than 99% of the people I've run into. <laughs> At the same time, in her mind, she was a chicken. In her mind, she was a, a child who wasn't standing up for herself enough. Uh, and that's, the, uh, the, the, uh, that's a good example of the kind of ways in which the way you think about yourself controls how you behave and how other people perceive you. I almost felt like saying to her without going any further, I think I know one of your problems. Mm. Wow. You know, as uh, again, we, we look at the question here, each of us lives in our own reality. It, for me, I, I think about it and I see why war can, can occur. Mm -hmm. um, because of the self-righteousness of the belief of someone's reality. Um, and, and you gave just sort of a, an example of it right there with uh, the female client. Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, we, what most of us don't realize is that the animal part of our brain operates on a survival level. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that existed long before the cerebral cortex. And on the survival level, you basically have the, uh, uh, the, the uh, four, what they call the four Fs. In the textbook, it reads uh, uh, fleeing, fighting, uh, um, let's see what they are. The, the fourth one is, is, is mating, feeding is the third one. So we have feeding, fleeing, fighting, and mating. Uh, that's the way it reads in the textbook. The, the bottom line on it is, though, that those four things are basically primitive animal things, and they are uh, what we turn to uh, and what the brain turns to uh, in its most primitive state. Uh, and when we feel there's something very strongly, it's that part of our brain that's reacting. So the bottom line on it is that, that uh, uh, we're animals reacting as animals that are looking at uh, feeding, fleeing, fighting, or mating mm. uh, as the primary issue. Mm. Uh, the reality is that very few issues are that primitive, uh, but we see it that way and we react that way. Uh, on the bottom line, that comes down to good guys, bad guys. That comes down to cowboys and Indians, good guys, bad guys, uh, 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 Israelis and Palestinians, uh, uh, blacks and whites, whatever other combination of, you know, a, a super simplistic way of looking at the world uh, that uh, divides it into, uh, in, into a dichotomous way uh, that has uh, everything is one way or the other, and you're on one side or the other, and if you're not on one side, uh, you must be on the other. Mm -hmm. uh, the truth is that uh, uh, that probably one of the truest things that anyone said was when Abraham Lincoln said, uh, the best way to destroy my enemies is to make them my friends. Wow. When you in fact understand and get inside the mind of your enemy, uh, and you begin to realize that there's no real difference between that person and you. Wow. Uh, and so you wind up then being in a position where you can see uh, well, it's like in any, in any war, even, uh, the generals truly understand how each other think. You know, they're each trying to out, out maneuver the other. Right. Each, the only way to do that is to get inside the head of the other general. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if, you know, one of my personal beliefs here is that, you know, it's a life force that connects us all, even though we are in essence, living our own reality. There's a life force that is directly connected to you. Mm -hmm. And for me, if there are 7 billion uh, different realities right now, and not you know, taking into account all the realities that have come before, uh, then life force is having a tremendous experience of itself, of these over 7 billion different realities that it gets to experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. I think that what makes it a little bit easier is realizing that there are really a limited number of ways of thinking. Mm. And so 
you may have 7 billion different experiences of reality, and that is true, uh, but there are only so many ways that those 7 billion people can categorize their realities. Uh, and uh, it has to do with how the brain functions, how the minds function, uh, and the assumption and life force that you're talking about, I would call uh, the subconscious, I would call the soul, I would call the, the part of us which is uh, not quantifiable, but is clearly there for any of us that, uh, uh, that operate on, on levels beyond what is tactile and uh, materialistic. Uh, so uh, it's a little simpler than that. Uh, otherwise, I couldn't do my job. In order to do my job, I really need to think the way the person I'm talking to is thinking. And, uh, and it's basically a, a curiosity issue. It's, uh, I keep asking questions and I keep checking out. And I keep hypothesizing. You know, uh, uh, what I think I'm good at is if, uh, if everybody is a puzzle that's 100 pieces, uh, I'm pretty good at if I get 25 or 30 pieces kind of painting in the rest. But I'm always open to the possibility that one of the pieces is, doesn't fit the way I have it. And, uh, uh, and the flexibility that's required to change my perception of your perception uh, is what enables me to hopefully help you. And, you know, I want to, again, then just bring this back to our general audience here in terms of why, why is it important to kind of keep that uh, concept in, in the forefront of our minds, that each of us lives in our own reality. You know, I think I can see why it's important, but share with us why you think, you know, others should try to keep that as, as, a, as a concept in the forefront. Because otherwise you wind up in that primitive part of your brain. Otherwise you wind up deciding that uh, you're a good guy and someone else is a bad guy. Uh, otherwise you wind up playing around with, uh, with good versus evil. Mm. Uh, or crazy versus uh, uh, good versus evil. Uh, so the, the, uh, the simple reality is that uh, if you understand that everybody has their perception of reality and, uh, and that the real issue is, are they hurting anybody mm. with that perception? Uh, that seems to me to be the, the cross cut. The, um, the, the truth is that when you really look at the issues of mental health, mental illness, and that kind of stuff, uh, they're just labels, they're just categories. Uh, they're just uh, things which need to be judged based on uh, how much of a problem a person is to other people or to themselves. Uh, there uh, is something that I realized a long time ago, which is that uh, there are many more uh, people walking around the earth with perceptions of reality that are completely different from reality. Uh, then there are people in mental hospitals who are called crazy. Mm. Uh, the real determination of whether you wind up in a mental hospital or a jail is how much of a pain in the ass you are. Mm. And to the extent that you bother other people or yourself, uh, uh, you wind up getting categorized, labeled, and sent into uh, uh, an institution or getting uh, 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 getting categorized in such a way that you wind up uh, uh, not being able to be free to do your own thing. And, and that feels today like what part of our problem may be, is that it feels as though others are demanding that other people accept their version of reality and conform to their vision of reality. And like you said, making the other person wrong for not accepting your uh, framework of reality. Yeah, the whole idea of I'm right, you're wrong uh, doesn't make any sense to me unless you uh, unless you determine it on the basis of who's getting hurt mm. and how much. Uh, and it's not that that uh, that it's not right to hurt people at, uh, because it is. But my belief is that it's not right to hurt people unnecessarily. Mm. If hurting somebody is the only way to teach them something they need to learn, uh, then to a great degree, I'm a teacher because I do hurt people who I uh, meet with, especially if they are hurting others or themselves. And that I, then again is probably the one of the tenets of this question here is that 
each of us lives in our own reality and you're welcome to it and free to live in it as long as it does not harm others or require others to accept your version of truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that we talked about it before, the concept of laying your trip on someone else. Uh, uh, it's your trip. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, people don't, don't really understand how much laying their trip on someone else can be a problem. Uh, you know, trying to think of a historical example, um, the, uh, the pilgrims uh, wound up uh, going into Holland and walking into the bars in Holland and screaming, you guys should not be drinking. Uh, and uh, as uh, you can do just about anything with the Dutch people except uh, uh, take away their freedom to uh, get stoned. And uh, uh, the result was that they got kicked out and wound up uh, uh, coming over here uh, and laying their trip on the Indians, mm. uh, excuse me, on the Native Americans. Uh, but you have this, this entire uh, idea of what I believe is what's right and what you believe is what's wrong, and that gives me the right to lay my trip on you. Mm. And whether you're uh, Great Britain or whether you're uh, 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 you know, the, uh, the cowboys, or whether you're, uh, uh, you're, you believe that might makes right, uh, uh, whether you believe that how wealthy you are determines whether you're right or wrong. Uh, that's all uh, a, a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, it's a, the, the real issue is that uh, what's right is uh, what your gut tells you is right that doesn't hurt yourself or other people. Speaking with Dr. Neil Marinello, our topic today is we each live in our own reality. The topics are picked from tweets that Dr. Neil Marinello uh, posts on his Twitter page. You're welcome to follow him directly at Coach Dr. Neil. And Neil, why don't you wrap up our, our session here today with your final thoughts on the topic uh, and how you know we can apply that to our everyday lives and use it to uh, move us forward in our everyday lives. Again, the, the topic is each of us lives in our own reality. Yeah, I think the, the basic idea here is to accept that your perception is not reality. And that to the extent that your perceptions give you permission to harm yourself or others, you need to re-examine them. That in any situation, you either grow or shrivel. If you stay the same, uh, you're, you're dealing with the, uh, the most important prayer that anybody ever developed from my perspective, which is the serenity prayer. And that is, uh, when someone once asked me, how do you do what you do? How do you see as many people with as many problems as you see and still stay in a positive space? And uh, my answer was, I think I understand the serenity prayer. I, uh, I accept what I can change. I change what I can. And I'm smart enough to know the difference. Not always, but I do the best I can. And everybody is doing the best they can. So if, if you want to do the best you can, be aware of the fact that your perceptions are not reality. Wonderful. And I love this because it segues right into our next week's conversation, which is no one is better than anyone else. And you sort of just touched on it there. Uh, and I, I just, I love the way that our conversations go because they naturally uh, continue and, and follow into our, our next topic. A reminder that uh, Good Mental Health, we do this each and every week. If you have a question of Dr. Neil Marinello, you're welcome to uh, ask the question in the comments section. Uh, we also invite you to subscribe and like this podcast and uh, join us next week. On behalf of Dr. Neil Marinello, I'm Matt Kelly wishing you good mental health.